welcome you today to our DMAS Emergency Room Physician Billing Updates presentation. Our agenda, we're going to review the General Assembly mandates. We're going to discuss preventable emergency room claims, preventable emergency room claims payment methodology, and then we're going to open up the forum to um, have questions. The General Assembly Appropriations Act 2020 mandates that effective January, July 1st, 2020, that DMAS make reimbursement changes for the following service. In emergency room claims, the reduction instructs DMAS to reduce payment for emergency room claims for codes 99282, 99283, and 99284 to the rate of a code for a 99281 if the emergency room claim is identified as preventable emergency room event. Beginning with dates of service on or after July 1st, 2020, the primary diagnosis code will be reviewed for all claims billed with emergency room codes 99281 through a 99284. For your information, there will be no change in the processing or payment for claims billed with CPT code 99285. If the primary diagnosis code on the claim is contained in the preventable emergency room listing, which is the avoidable emergency room diagnosis code list currently used for managed care organizations, clinical efficiency rate adjustments. The payment will be reduced to pay the Medicaid allowable for CPT code 99281. Providers submitting claims on the CMS 1500 claim form, the primary diagnosis code is reported in locator 21, locator 20 with the primary set for A. If you submit your claims electronically using EDI guidelines, those guidelines can be found on the DMAS web portal under the companion guides. Provider information. On the DMAS web portal today, there is a Medicaid memo with a July 1st, 2020 date of service on hospital readmission and emergency room payment reduction. All of the information that we are discussing in this presentation today can be found in that memo. Also for providers, for you to identify any emergency room physicians codes which have been reduced because the diagnosis code was found on the preventable emergency room diagnosis code list, those reductions can be identified with an error code 927, and the message will read, reduce to pay fee 99281. Um, very short presentation. I do recommend that you go to the DMAS web portal um, on the provider of services. You will see Medicaid bulletins. When you select Medicaid bulletins, you'll have the years select 2020, and it's the Medicaid memo dated July 1st, 2020. Within that memo, as I stated, you have the guidelines we just discussed. Also, the mandate from the General Assembly is listed there. It is a 40-page memo. The pages of the memo has a list of diagnosis codes which have been identified as preventable emergency room um, diagnosis codes. Um, for all of the reductions that you receive, Medicaid will identify them as previously stated with that error code. Questions? Um, we have questions in the chat box, Myra. Okay. Um, well, it looks like I'm sorry. I'm 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 getting out of my presentation and I'm coming back. That's okay. I'll go ahead and read that for you. Thank you, dear. Um, what that 
just posted. I was on the site yesterday and couldn't find any information about this reduction. Okay. The Medicaid memo is available. I was out there this morning. We had a session this morning and um, they asked where the memo could be found. So I actually went to the website during the session and it, it is available on the DMAS web portal, not the DMAS website, but the DMAS web portal, the same portal where you would go in to utilize the automated response system um, to um, verify your um, eligibility, um, the same system that you would utilize to submit your claims through direct data entry, same um, website where our DMAS manuals are located. So it's not the DMAS website, it's the DMAS web portal. Thank you, Myra. Next question. Is it an error code or explanation of payment remark? Code 927. It would be explanation of payment remark code. And when we say error code, that's how we identify them in our system, but you're exactly right. It's the on your remittance advice. And these are the DMAS codes, not your national codes. Okay. Next question. This reduction does not apply to readmission for physician's payment, correct? Correct. The codes that we're discussing within this presentation this afternoon only apply to emergency room physicians codes. These, the reduction has, does not apply to physicians codes treatment rendered for patients who are readmitted to the hospital. That is correct. Thank you. Next question. If we feel we were reduced in error, is it true we only have 30 days to appeal that decision? The normal Medicaid appeal guidelines will still apply. Okay. So this reduction doesn't apply to readmission for physicians or payments, correct? We just did that one. I do apologize. Okay, yes, thanks. Okay. Doesn't doesn't this go against the putant layperson definition? I'm sorry. Okay, so the question, does this go against the putant layman? Okay, so I'm going to need you to, um, to let me know what you're referencing there, Adam. Adam Rockman, what question are you referencing when you say, doesn't this go against the putant layman's definition? Okay, we're going to go to the next question while we wait on on that answer. On that question again. All right. Um, if we feel we reduce an error, is it true we only have, okay. Um, is there an exception for critical access hospitals? No. No. Okay. No. All anyone, right. who, anyone who builds emergency room services with the codes that we identified, um, the diagnosis codes will be reviewed. Okay. Um, what national code will see our remittance on our remittance advice? Okay. As far as the national um, code, I apologize. I don't know the corresponding um, national code that equates to our DMAS code. I apologize for that. I can check and see if we have that information. Myra? Yes, ma'am. It's Bonnie Wynn. Yes. Right now, we have not identified the National Rocks and Cars codes because we're trying to coordinate with the MCOs so that we all use the same on the electronic remits. Right. That was Bonnie Wynn, our um, IM consultant. So we're trying to um, make sure that the information that we, DMAS, speed for service share with you, the providers, and the information that our managed care organizations share, it's uniform. So right now we haven't identified a national code as of yet. Okay. 
Is the expectation for ER providers to turn away non-emergent patients? Uh, read that again. Is the expectation for ER providers to turn away um, non-ER patients? They're asking if they should turn away patients who are not deemed as an emergency. No, this is no. Bonnie Wynn. Um, and the reason is that EMTALA requires them to at least do a minimal assessment and then give them instructions on discharge, which will equate to the 99281 ER code. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. All right, um, let's see, next question. Uh, would this reduction apply to non-ED providers who may provide services in the ED, for example, trauma surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, who or would not be impacted if they build the CPT codes? Bonnie, correct me if I'm wrong. What we're looking at is the code that's billed. If you build a level of a 99281 through a 99284, our system is going to look at the diagnosis code bill to determine whether or not the reduction should apply. It has, it's not per specialty. It's based on the code that's billed. And keep in mind, this is Bonnie interjecting, keep in mind when that member patient hits that ER, it's usually the ER physician that does the initial assessment, and he calls in the orthopedic or the trauma surgeon, and they usually bill for the specific service they do, not the actual ER visit itself. Doesn't mean they can't, but if they do bill those, one of those four codes, they're subject to the reduction also. Thank you, Bonnie. So if we send medical documentation with our first submission to prove the medical necessity of the visit, will we be reduced or will our medical documentation be reviewed prior to the reduction? It's an automatic system reduction. So they shouldn't be sending any, any medical records with the claim. If they, if they truly think that it's an emergency and they are on the preventable diagnosis list on their claim, I would suggest that they discuss with the physician to make sure he knows and is actually has the appropriate diagnosis code on the claim. All right, thank you so much. I, at this point, do not have any more questions. All right. Um, okay. For those of you who called in, and um, we had a session this morning, and we attempted to open up and um, answer questions. Before Naira, it's okay this afternoon. I think it's people are on the line, but I am able to unmute. So if you are calling in and you have a question, go ahead and address your question, please. Yeah, and they said it was not for this either. Okay, I am going to unmute everyone's line. So I'm going to ask if you do not have a question on your end, will you please press the mute button? The lines are now unmuted. If you want to go ahead and verbally address the question, go ahead. Are there any questions that anyone on the line would like to address 
The lines are now open. Go ahead. The, uh, the memo references the preventable emergency room listing. Is that the same thing as the lane ER code list that appears later in the memo? Yeah. Yes. Thanks. It's at the very end. Thank you for your question. Are there any more? So I just wanted to um, get you guys to elaborate on the appeal time frame because in the bulletin it says for appeals that we have 30 days of the provider's receipt of the decision to appeal. So normally we have 365 days to appeal a claim to Virginia Medicaid except for claim checks. So do we have 365 days if we are underpaid or do we have 30 days? Could we go talk to Michelle now? Because I'm really worried about what billing is going to happen now. Please mute your line if you're not asking a question at this time. Thank you. My understanding that not. Okay. Um, Myra? Um, per my understanding, the normal appeals guidelines are, uh, apply, but I'm going directly to the memo right now to see what's there. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, per the memo, providers appealing any DMAS decision made pursuant to this bulletin shall file a written notice of an informal appeal with the DMAS Appeals Division within 30 days of the provider's receipt of the Medicaid bulletin. That's the receipt of your Medicaid remit. Okay. Thank you, Myra. That's, that's, that's what's listed. Thank you very much. Okay, the lines have been muted again. There are a few questions left here in the chat and the Q&A. We're going to address those, and then we will be ending our session for today. Let's see. Um, you only have 30 days up here, so we have 30 days up here, 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 30 days but the list lower is called lanes, ER, code list. Are they the same? Hold on just a second. I'm going to what we have in the memo so that I can identify it as what's listed, okay? Thank you. Not a problem. Per the memo. If the principal diagnosis code on the claim is contained in the preventable emergency room listing, it's the avoidable emergency room diagnosis code list currently used for managed care organization clinical efficiency rate adjustments. That's what we have in our memo. So I don't know anything about a lane list. Um, our memo does not reference a lane list. Um, Myra? Yes, ma'am. This is Bonnie Wynn, and it is the same. It okay. is labeled the Lane Emergency um, Preventable di Diagnosis. They're the same. Okay. All right, okay. Kathy, that's our answer. It is the same. All right. Thank you, ladies. Next question. Um, what if there are multiple diagnosis lists for the patient, but one of the diagnoses falls under the 800 
listed to da listed to down code, would this result in an automatically down code? And I guess Bonnie, I'll address that with you. Okay. Um, no, it would not. We're okay. only looking at the primary diagnosis on the on the claim. Okay. Wonderful. Well, it looks like that we have addressed all questions. Um, if you all do not have any more questions, I guess we'll hang out for another minute or so, and then we will end the session for today. It's down on the screen side. Okay, I would like to thank everyone for attending today's session. Remember, at the bottom portion of the screen, there's a red button with an X in it. If you click on it, it will log you out of today's session. Again, thank you for attending today's session.